Welcome into PressBox Live. I'm Stan the Fan Charles of PressBox and PressBoxOnline.com. And with me, and it looks like he's out in the beautiful sunny day out there at Towson University in front of CQ Arena. That's a great backdrop. Is an old friend, Pat Scary. Pat, how are you, my friend? I'm great, man. Appreciate you guys having me on. One of my uh, assistants, Parfait Bate, did the backdrop. Looks really good. It really does look good. That really does look good. Uh, Pat, it's crazy. I probably haven't seen you in close to two years. Uh, we did a Zoom about 10 months ago or 12 months ago, and I fully intended to get out to some games this year, but I haven't. Does it feel, and, and I'm amazed at how well you bounced back after a rough year last year during the heart of the pandemic at four and 14, you're 17 and seven. Does it feel like things are getting back to normal? I'm going to try and get out Saturday afternoon to see you. It, it does. You know, uh, we had two home games, uh, whatever, I guess not last week, the week before, and it was really the first time I think in, in, really two years that it felt like college basketball atmosphere, no restrictions, yep. a band, there was energy in the building and, and we're expecting more of that uh, this week with, with, with a couple home games. And, you know, I, for one, I'm not taking any of that for granted. I'm really appreciative of after having gone through that last year of just having some normalcy, having a good team, having a good staff, and then playing meaningful games in February and March. That's really what it's about, Stan. Well, it de it definitely looks like you're going to play some meaningful games. You got William and Mary tomorrow, which is Thursday the 10th at five o'clock, which is a little bit of an odd start time. Is there a reason behind that, or is that pandemic related that you're trying to get things, to, you know, things over earlier? Good, good question. But no, uh, the game was picked up by national television, CBS okay. Sports. And we're expecting a good crowd, especially with the student body. Um, we just had this game was picked up on national TV and next Thursday at six o'clock at UNC Wilmington. So that's actually be our eighth national televised game this year. So it's the most in program history. So we're pretty excited about that. That's great. That's great. Now, Saturday afternoon at two o'clock, you play Elon College uh, there. Uh, you're I think you're are you eight and two at home this year? I think, yeah, we're eight and two at home, and we, we've been pretty good on the road, too. I think we're, like, we were top two or three in the country in road wins, and, you know, uh, but we got to protect home this week. We're a game uh, out of first or a game and a half out of first. Uh, you know, they're all, they're all Super Bowl-type games. You know, uh, you, you got to execute at a high level, and, you know, your, your, your veteran guys, your guys you lean on, they, they got to play at a high level this time of year. So tell me a little bit about this year's club. I, I went over, I have not seen a game. That's why I'm looking forward to getting out there Saturday against Elon. Uh, it, it looks like you've got a world of depth. It, it looks like you got a lot of contributors. It's not one or two good players and the rest sort of supporting cast members. It seems like it's a very well-balanced team. It is, and it's a really, really great group of guys. I mean, as nice a group of guys I've ever been around. Um, you know, I, I think the first thing is we had four players coming back that played a lot of minutes in, you know, Charles Thompson, Juwan Gray, Jason Gibson, and Nick Timberlake. And those guys are all playing well. More importantly, Timberlake, Gibson, and Gray all had major surgery last year. So they either couldn't make it through the season all right after had to have surgery. So the fact that they're healthy has helped us tremendously. You know, the year before that, we won 19 games, and those guys played a big role. And then we've got good transfers. Uh, you know, Cam Holden is a, is a first-team all-league player. Um, Terry Nolan, local guy, has had a really good year for us, and he's missed some games with a, with a respiratory issue. We're hoping to have him back for the stretch. Chase Pars helped us big 6'10 guy from Maryland native from Mount Airy. And, and then Antonio Rizzuto has been a really good player for us throughout the road in York PA. So our transfers have fit in from day one. It's been seamless as far as the, just their attitude and, and their leadership. And it, 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 it's helped. Like I said, we're not taking any of that, any of that for granted. It's a, it's a really good group of guys. Now you've got a number. I counted like five contributing seniors right now. 
Are those guys part of this? When you say it's a great group of guys, that generally means everybody's pulling in the same direction. Are they showing a lot of senior leadership and having five of them? Is that like a bonus a little bit? I, they, they, they are definitely pulling in the same direction and their experience that they, they've had successful game experience. And that's really helped. The interesting thing is all, it'll be like in this day of the transfer portal, they, all of them can come back um, except for Juwan Gray, who's in his 60th. So we'll, we'll, we'll figure that out after, but we have some guys in school. And, and uh, my thing now is, if a guy's earned it academically, let's recognize where he's at academically, whether he's a senior or a grad student. But I think your your point about experience, the, the successful game experience, these are guys that, you know, Nolan was a double-figure scorer at Bradley in GW. Chase Parr started at GW. Rizzuto made all-conference in the America East, and Holden made all-conference in the Ohio Valley. So these guys know what it's like to kind of be in the thick. It it, uh, it just seems like I've watched your teams over the years and it always seems like you got one really good player, two or three decent players, and then there's a little bit of a drop off. This team looks like it's got seven to, to nine players deep. Uh, ha, is there a struggle at all to find them minutes? So we're about to find out because we've had a good stretch and then we've had some guys <laughs> injuries but uh, we, we've talked about that we've got eight veteran guys and then we got one freshman a kid named Radia Hicks from Philly who's helped us um, so he's he's been the, the one new guy out of the, a handful of freshmen that's been able to kind of play his way into the mix but you know we're going to need everyone to, to get where we we hope to get to and, and you just hope guys continue to understand that when you win everybody gains Pat, you mentioned that you got that game coming up next week. Is it Wednesday or Thursday against uh, North Carolina Wilmington? It'll be next Thursday at six. Thursday at six o'clock. And you see- played them. They came. They came to your house about three, four weeks ago, and took care of you pretty good. Uh, one of the only losses at home this year. Uh, how good a club are they? And are your guys chomping at the bit to play them again? Well, I'm sure they'll get to chomping at the bit. We better be ready to play William, Mary, and Elon. We, uh, they're good. They're doing it. Kyle Siddle's doing a really good job. We blew a big lead and then lost in overtime. So, uh, you know, uh, hopefully we can handle business, and it, it, it's, a, it's a crucial game. We'll f- we won't know for a couple more days. But, uh, you know, these guys, our, our kids stand up and good. They, they understand that if, if we don't play well, on Thursday or Saturday, we'll have our hands full. Right, but it sounds like it's the type of it's the type of group of guys that that aren't going to lay down against teams that they should beat. You know, it they seems will, like they're going to come. They're going to come in prepared. They'll be prepared and they'll play hard. I always say though, sometimes like you know, we got to give the other team credit too. They put a game plan together and they got good players. So, you know, you got to execute. The couple of games we've lost, we just. You know, we lost to a Northeastern team that's not having the type of year they normally have. We lost a one possession game. We were one for 15 from three. That's That sometimes happens too. Pat, uh, you said something astounding to me before we went on the air. I said, hey, you're 17 and seven. And you said, oh, yeah, we're just getting all the guys back now. So, I mean, it's been kind of a, a ragtag season on one level where you haven't had any everybody how have you been able to accomplish that much with so many small injuries that have kept people out? Yeah, I think our staff has done a really good job. And, and then just the guys have, even on the games we've lost, they've been wars. And it's a credit to the kids. They, they've really, they, they've hung in there and they've battled. And, you know, I respect that about them. Um, one of the things I wanted to ask you is, when you end up with a team that's 17 and seven playing really good basketball, uh, you're, I think 12 and three in your last 15 games is when did you realize you had sort of a special group and some potential? I'm looking at some games early in the year. You lost to Pitt at Pitt by four points. You lost to Ohio state by 11, which means you're kind of in the game. You beat New Mexico 
you clobbered Kent State, and you clobbered Navy. Uh, those are games that Towson usually doesn't clobber people. Uh, when did you feel that this team had a chance to be a little bit special? The summer. We weren't healthy yet, but just the, the, the chemistry and the intent of the guys, we felt like if we could get healthy. The, we, we've had a lot of hard-playing teams. I think this team plays pretty hard, but the difference is this team – when we're really rolling has exceptional ball movement. And that's, that, that started in the summer. And so it's a big reason why we need to get Terry Nolan back. He is before he had the respiratory issue, he was leading our league in assists and assist to turnover ratio, which is pretty hard to do. So, you know, when guys share the ball and their intent is like that, everyone gets, you know, the, we always say, we say ball gives you energy. Yeah. I hear that. I hear that. Um, the transfer portal, how have you gotten used to that? Uh, you know, do you like it? Do you think it's good for basketball at Towson's level? You know, it, it doesn't matter whether I like it or I think it's good. We've adjusted to it. It's, 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 uh, we want to get a couple of good high school players early every year, which we did this year. And then we, you know, late, I think if, if we have openings, we want to look for veteran impact players. You know, one thing I think some people forget, we are the only school, I still believe this is true, in the history of college basketball to take a transfer, and then he became a player of the year in the league with Jarrell Benjamin. So yeah. we pride ourselves on, on trying to really develop guys, and any transfers out there listening, this is a good place for you. <laughs> uh, how's Jarrell doing nowadays? What's he up to? Well, he's had a, he had a good career playing, and it's that that piece of stuff made a made a little bit of money, and hopefully he's uh, saved some of that. But uh, he's he's as good as we've ever had, Coach. Uh, um, I, I've known you for now. What we've known each other what 10, 11 years now here in in, in Baltimore. Uh, I know you're a, a gym rat. You love the game of basketball. How much do you respect what Mike Krzyzewski has done as he's about to? you know, turn out the lights on his, on his coaching career. Uh, have you, have you been one of those guys that really has appreciated what he's done? I mean, it's the gold standard, right? It would be like going to Starbucks or Gatorade, right? You know, I mean, it's, you know, do it that long at that high level. Obviously he's the gold standard. It also speaks to his university and his administration, his athletic support staff, you know, just how committed they are to, having a, a successful product. It, you know, sometimes I think coaches get a little bit too much credit, Stan, when you win, and a little bit too much blame when you lose. I think when it's really, when you're really connected uh, all the way across campus, you can achieve special things. So is that like, a it, would Towson be doing the right thing to get behind you for about another 25 years? Well, I would love that, I'll tell you that. I, I have a great, I, you know, my relationship with my president is great. She's a worker. She's sharp and she's, she's invested here. And, you know, we've had a really good stretch of Towson athletics and our universities on the rise, but we both know, like I said, we've had eight national television appearances. There's, there's nothing else at our university can get you on national TV eight times. So, you know, if we can be, I said this when I got hired a front porch for the rest of our house, which is our university, you know, that's really what we're aspiring to do. And hopefully we, we can do that at even a greater level because we have a great place here at Towson University. I didn't I didn't intend to ask you this, but, you know, your your athletic director, Timmy Leonard, is is has left the university and Dan Crowley has taken over as an interim. Uh, how has Dan handled the job? Yeah, he's done a great job. I mean, at least those things are never easy. Tim, Tim did a good job and then. Dan's done a good job. And, um, you know, I, I, I've been fortunate to have good athletic directors and, 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 and good presidents and, and good people here. And, uh, you know, that's, it's really the, 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 like I said, it's the coaches. Sometimes you get too much credit when you win and too much blame when you lose. It's, 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 it's having good people around you, which we have here, which makes it most helpful and beneficial. Yeah. No question of that. But I've observed that Dan seems to be doing a really everything seems to be steady as she goes, which is what you, that's the most you can hope for when you get somebody that's interim 
But who knows? Maybe they'll take that interim tag away from Danny. Who knows? I'm not yeah, asking yeah. for your. I'm not asking you to to go to bat form or anything like that. I'll I'll stay away from that. But now it's, we've got good leadership, and I'm sure we're, you know our leadership's going to make good decisions for us. I have great great faith in that. We're talking with Pat Scary, the uh, head men's basketball coach at Towson University, seventeen and seven. You've got William and Mary tomorrow night at five o'clock. You've got Elon on Saturday afternoon at two o'clock. Then you go down to uh, North, Cal North Carolina and South Carolina. You play UNC Wilmington and Charleston. Then you come back and play a home and away with James Madison, uh, which could be kind of a pivotal two games. What kind of club has James Madison been this year from what you hear? You know, they had a great win over Virginia early in the year. So that right there jumps jumps out at you. Um, they're right. good. They, they, they're fast. They're athletic. They can score the ball. They can turn you over. And Mark Byington, the coach there, is, is a terrific coach. We worked together at College of Charleston years ago. So, um, you know, it, it, it's it, – it, those will be two hard games. It, is that – am I reading something into – that's an oddity of playing a team – home and away back-to-back -back games that, that makes it it's tough to beat the same team twice isn't it yeah you know what here's what happened uh, our first game against them they were on a COVID pause okay and then, and then we when we ended up rescheduling we were going to put it on one date then we both were jammed up with a couple other reschedule games and we both had a bye the last week so we we talked and we said it might make sense just to put it there okay all right now that I understand that what came about your tournament is still in Charleston, Washington D.C. At the it's in uh, Washington D.C. At what at school? The Events and Entertainment Center, where the um, the WNBA team plays and, and the G League team plays. The okay. five thousand there, um, and it, it's that up, down by the Navy Yard area. It's it's, it, it's a really growing area, and, and we're excited for that. Is this the first year down there? So the first year was the year the just as the pandemic hit. Uh, okay. Go there, so this is now the second year there. Okay, and and it's you you like it as a, a home for the tournament right now? Yeah, yeah. I mean, you know, what better place than the nation's capital, right? Everyone's got alums in that area, and um, hopefully that you know all the, the schools do a good job of getting some of the alums out to it, especially coming coming out of the, some of these viruses and and as things seem to be you know lessening a little bit, that would, would be. I, I think we'll have a good environment down there. All right. Listen, Pat, I appreciate your coming on again. Uh, you got things going pretty darn good. I've talked to a few people that are my bird dogs out there. They tell me they really like your club, and it sounds like you like your club. And most of all, when you've got a team playing like this, you're having a good time, aren't you, coaching this group? Well, I mean, we're looking for perfection, which we're never going to get, but it's it's there has not been – many days where you're not jacked up to see this group. And that, that, that piece I'm appreciative of. All right. Pat Scary, the men's basketball coach at Towson University. Thanks for taking some time with us. Thanks for having me on. You stay well, my friend. All right. Appreciate it. Pat Scary. I'll be back tomorrow night, by the way. No Gary Stein again, but tomorrow night we'll have uh, city councilman, Dr. John Bullock on with us. I'm sorry. I uh, should have had this up here. John Bullock will be on with us, city councilman, and Stephanie Williams, the president of the Pitch and Putt Golf Club at Carroll Park. We'll talk about a history-making dedication out there last week and what that's all about. For Pat Scary, I'm Stan the Fan Charles, and we'll see you tomorrow night.